Hey everyone, how's it going? This is the Bald Metal Nerd coming at you with my first official video of 2021. And I thought, what better way to start off the new year than uh, pissing off some rather self-important audio files, right? Uh, with the main thesis of this video. Uh, because clearly you know what it is, because you read the damn title. Um, and how did I come to this conclusion? Especially... When I used to have the opposite view, I used to believe the DAX could have a fairly large impact on the sound. What made me disabuse myself of the notion? Well, I will tell you uh, how I originally came to this conclusion, and of course now how I hold the opposite view, right? Um, I don't know, several years ago, I think in like 2015 or 2016, I bought this item. This is an Audio Engine D1, which is an external amplifier, uh, headphone amp slash DAC, right? And um, to be fair, my perceptions were skewed. And, and what do I mean by that? Well, when I very first auditioned this device, I tested it against basically the built-in headphone amplifier of a laptop, right? That was my initial experience for this. And this was a pretty significant improvement in sound over that headphone amp in um, the laptop, right? And I thought to myself, wow, this can make a huge difference as far as sound quality goes. I'm not so sure that it was the DAC that made this difference, though. Um, I believe what made the difference in that setup was more the amp part of this, right? Amplification part in the in the headphone amp, right? I was like, because the output quality of an amp does matter. And in um, a typical uh, headphone amp in a device like a laptop, it's going to be exceptionally low quality, right? So, um, that wasn't how I was going to primarily use, that is not how I have primarily used the device over the years, though. Um, I used it in my desktop setup for many years, right? Convinced, absolutely convinced that this would make an improvement over my internal PC's uh, DAC, right? And the reason I kept that notion going for many years is because I have noticed when I plug you know, a 3.5 millimeter into the analog out on a PC, and then, you know, you do the Y cable into RCAs into an amplifier, um, very often you can have humming or buzzing or noise or whatever else. There, there are problems typically inherent in a, with a lot of PCs. Not all, it's not a universal, but a lot of PCs have a level of, we'll call them, imperfections in the analog domain when you run directly from the PC into an amp. So, and obviously plugging this in and, you know, going directly from the RCA outs on this into the amp eliminates that, right? You don't hear the noise anymore, the buzzing or the hum or whatever. It's, it's non-existent. Plus, the headphone amp in this is superior to the headphone output that I had on my... Um, AV receiver that I was using with my PC for years, right? So for a long time, I thought, wow, DAX really can make a difference, right? And recently, very recently, I made a video about buying this item. This is a cheap sound card, $40 Asus sound card. And the only reason I got this is because I wanted to add an optical out to my PC, Right, that's literally the only reason I got this thing. Um, I didn't think it would make any difference, you know, sound quality wise and spoil or it doesn't. I just wanted that optical out. So um, what I decided to do is I wanted to kind of revisit just DAX, right? So how did I do that? Well, pretty simple. I uh, basically ran the optical out from that sound card directly into the optical in on my amp, which is a Yamaha A-S301. You can Google what, 
what what DAC is in that thing. Um, whatever it is, the chip supports up to three hundred and eighty four thousand kilohertz, kilobits, kilohertz, whatever you want to call it. You know, the really big number for the high res audio, and it's either twenty or four thirty two bit. I'm not sure which. Uh, this supports. Uh, 192,000 kilohertz and 24-bit audio. Um, just in case you are curious. So what I did is I, of course, uh, had to compare between the PC going directly into my amp versus this, right? Uh, because what I did is I ran the optical out from a CD player, which is a circa 2001 JVC 5-disc CD changer, into the, into the optical input on this. And so I would just, you know, A, B between my PC playing the song versus the CD player playing through this and the song, right? So what did I hear as far as differences go in sound quality? None. Um, and the reason I say that is because I wasn't able to volume match the two devices precisely, right? I got into maybe with half a decibel of each other. I used a digital sound meter to do this, by the way. Um, and whichever one was slightly lower, whichever one was the half dB louder, I would hear more clarity, soundstage, depth, better tone, blah, blah, all the audiophile bullshit terms that were, we all know and love. Whichever one was half a decibel louder, I heard it as be is quote unquote better that's how the human mind is operate you know wired to operate right so whichever one i got slightly louder because i i consistently i was like you know what i'm going to test this so i would intentionally make one source once i found the discrepancy i would intentionally make one source louder one source softer and surprise, 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 whichever one it was, the louder one always sounded better. So if I initially thought this sounded better, right, I would crank the volume on, uh, you know, the one going into my amp directly a little more. And then I thought the amp would sound better. And if I would crank this a little more, I thought this would sound better. You get the idea. It would go back and forth. So I was thinking to myself, wow, it really doesn't make very, any real audible difference as far as sound quality goes. So one thing a lot of... Um, that's very common uh, amongst audiophiles is they're like, well, you know, uh, a DAC in a cheap CD player is going to sound like crap, right? Oh, the DACs that are in a, you know, cheap CD players aren't any good, blah, blah, blah. Well, my five disc CD changer is from 2001. So it's already an old product, right? Nearly 20 years old at this point. And it was $110 back then. So it was not an expensive CD player. So. Surely, surely, if DAX made a big difference, like a, ch quote, cheap DAC, they're not going to get much cheaper than what was in that CD player, right? So I compared, again, this to what was in my CD player, right? Well, same thing. Whichever one was slightly louder, I thought sounded better. There was no tonal differences. It was just whichever one was louder. That's all it was. That is all it was. And going into this uh, little experiment that I did, I had no um, expectations that my opinion on this would change. I honestly thought I would hear differences in the DAC and all that. I wanted to make sure I was getting the best audio experience that I could, but it turns out my choice of DAC had absolutely nothing to do with it, right? Um, because DACs just don't matter very much. And Dak's a fact, Jack. <laughs> anyway, um, the reason it, it just it just doesn't. And in the uh, description of this video, I will link an article uh, go which goes to Tom's Hardware and uh, which explains what you actually need for a great PC sound, right? And you you guys might think, well, you're just a plebeian and, and you have just crappy equipment or you're deaf or whatever, blah blah, friggin' blah. There is a guy in this article who has like a $70,000 system, right? And he tests out a $2 DAC uh, versus a um, the benchmark uh, DAC. I don't remember the exact model, but I know it's a DAC that costs literally a couple of thousand dollars, right? And um, 
they can't hear the difference between the two dollar DAC and the couple of thousand dollar DAC, right? Because the more you spend on a DAC, it gets you more features. It doesn't really necessarily get you better sound quality, right? Because what actually matters in sound quality, right? As far as like what you're going to hear, well, of course, probably the most important thing is how good is the recording, right? Because if you're if it's a crap recording, it's going to sound like crap no matter what, right? So let's say let's assume you have <clears throat> excuse me a good recording, well the most important part as far as what you hear and, and how you perceive it or whatever, of course, is going to be your speakers slash headphones, right? Uh, they've got to be up to the task of reproducing uh, the music well, right? Um, and if they are, assuming that they are, you know, you're halfway there. The other big part of the equation is, of course, your amplification. And what do you need as far as an amp goes? Well, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Basically, you know your amp is doing its job if you can drive your speakers or headphones to what I would say comfortably loud listening levels with no distortion and you have some headroom left. Uh, so basically, I like to listen, say, around 85 decibels, right, uh, when, I'm, when I'm jamming out. Is I would call that comfortably loud. And uh, when I'm listening at that level, yeah, I'm not even half on my uh, amplifier. I'm not even halfway, right? Because if I put my amp up to ha just 50%, it's, it's blowing me out of the room. It's, it gets really loud at that point. It's like, I don't know, with my speakers, it's like 90, 95 decibels is too damn loud, right? So, um, and at 50, even at 50%, I have, of course, zero distortion, right? And the amp still has 50% 50 more to go. So I know my amp is doing its job incredibly well. In fact, I just recently switched out my amp because back in 2019, I got my current amp. Before that, I was just using an AV receiver. And to get to the, quote, comfortably loud listening level, I had to crank that thing most of the way up, way past 50%. I think it was up to maybe 80 or 90% to be, quote, comfortably loud, right? Now, there was no distortion at that point, but there was a lot less headroom and that amp simply didn't sound as as good as my current amp. And again, I think that was the whole, quote, headroom thing, right? It just didn't have it like my current amp does. Um, same thing with the head, headphone amp. The reason this sounds so much damn better than what's built into like a laptop or cheap receiver or whatever is the amp in this can drive headphones a lot better, right? It, it gets them loud enough. And that's really all it is, right? Is the quality of your speakers and amplification are of really high importance the other more esoteric stuff not so much right and granted i will admit that my experience is quote unquote limited since i was only able to compare to like three different DACs, and i only maybe did it with like five different recordings across a genre variety of genres of music uh just to make sure that i wasn't crazy right and you might say to yourself, well, you know, do you even know, know anything about audio at all? I don't claim to be an expert, but I consider myself a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? An interested amateur. In fact, if I wasn't like at, at all into it, I sure as hell never would have bought this book, right? This big, thick book about, uh, <laughs> about music, right? And just sound reproduction. So that's basically it. Um, so for you audiophiles out there who hear massive differences uh, with DACs or power cords or interconnects or whatever other stupid little esoteric tweak that you're doing, are you truly hearing a difference or are you just, you know, hearing a difference? Because you spend a bunch of money on something, you're probably going to hear a difference on it, whether, whether it's actually there or not. Um, in fact, like I said, going into this, I was more biased in favor of thinking DAX did make a difference. But coming out of this, I know that they really don't. And um, that's basically it. Um, all that really matters in DAX is does it have the features you want? Does it support the codecs you want? Yada, yada, yada. But as far as, quote, sound quality goes, it ain't going to make one lick of difference for the most part. So that is basically it. I hope you guys like this. As always, live long and prosper. Keep on rocking. I'll see you guys next time.